Hello, you're watching the Open RAN Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels. Now, as Open RAN deployments start to scale and feature not only in greenfield sites, but also existing brownfield networks, the wider industry is closely following the actions of the major telcos. And one of these leading CSPs is Orange. And I'm delighted to say that joining me now is Atusa Hatefi who is Director of Innovation in Radio and Environment at Orange. Hello, Tusa. Good to have you back on the programme. It's been a couple of years since we last spoke. Now, let me first of all start by asking you about the position of Orange on Open RAN. What's its assessment of the technology and its viability to Orange? Yeah, actually, we're confident that open run will happen uh, so the question is not if but it's uh, when so we are interested in open run and our interest is relying on uh, three main pillars so openness uh, cloudification and uh, intelligence and these different pillars are not all at the same level of maturity so if we start by the openness uh, so it's a key requirement for us um, in order to increase vendor diversity to ease swaps um, in short term uh, we are uh, actually considering uh, open frontal ready um, equipment as a main uh, requirement and it's it's key for us but in longer term we would like to also to extend this uh, openness to the cloud infrastructure part and you'll like to uh, actually uh, see uh, a smooth uh, let's say uh, portability of VRAN software across diverse cloud infrastructure and this is today um, uh, less major compared to the open frontal um, the second pillar, cloudification. So um, actually we have a strong interest towards a unified cloud infrastructure and orchestration with native CI CD in order to reduce the OPEX. Um, cloudification is today more or less major uh, for rural use cases. And this is already actually um, uh, the case. Um, I mean, uh, we, we are already actually uh, trialing it um, in Romania in a pilot and uh, it, it is successful for V2G and V4G, and, and soon we will, we will test V5G. Um, but for more complex scenarios, uh, particularly in urban with high capacity, uh, let's say radio configuration with massive MIMO, there are still some improvements to be done uh, on the cloud infrastructure part, uh, particularly in terms of uh, dimensioning and, um, and energy consumption. But we are confident that this also will happen in the near future, particularly with the next generation uh, of chipsets. And uh, the last pillar, intelligence. Uh, so higher automation and uh, achieving this level four is one of our main objectives with higher customization, higher reactivity in terms of network operation, network management and, uh, and network optimization. Uh, we are targeting actually a multi uh, vendor, multi-technology and multi-domain SMO, including non-real-time rig, which should be able to work not only with uh, open cloud RAN, but also with traditional RAN. And in that spirit, we are considering the migration of our CSLAM towards non-real-time rig, uh, including with our traditional RAN network. Fantastic. Positive message there. And thanks very much for going through the, the various elements that, uh, that that you keep your focus on. Um, you, you mentioned some progress that you're making there and, and uh, some trials and what have you. Um, are you able to provide us with a, 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 a summary update on what your deployment plans may be? Yeah, actually, uh, deployment of Open RAN and, and its introduction in our networks uh, will be gradual. Um, as the Brownfield operator, we have very demanding requirements. And, um, and also introduction of open RAN comes with some, uh, some impacts in terms of operation and in, uh, which requires also lots of upskilling on our side. Uh, that's why we're considering uh, this migration from traditional RAN to open RAN as a journey. We are in a, today in a learning process and we are progressing very well thanks to different initiatives that we have. Uh, so PKO in the past, different lab testing, uh, including ORAN PlugFest in our premises uh, and also the ongoing pilot in, in Romania. Um, so in terms of introduction, uh, we are targeting first Europe on a case by case basis. So as I said, rural is the first case that we are considering. Uh, so we have already a pilot uh, ongoing. 
and urban will come next when it is mature, uh, particularly um, for high, uh, let's say, capacity radio configurations in urban. And uh, once uh, the improvements in terms of uh, dimensioning and energy consumptions uh, are already there. The deployment can scenario that I mentioned with rural, urban, once mature, but at the same time, we are also actually studying and evaluating some other opportunities for deployment, particularly in the context of private networks. And this could also be beneficial uh, in order to be able to have a kind of unified cloud infrastructure for different type of workloads uh, 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 for, for enterprise use cases. Great. Thanks very much for that update, uh, Tusa. Now, Open Run has the promise to extend the range of potential suppliers and, in theory, lead to more competition. But can smaller alternative vendors really compete and have direct relationships with telcos? Or do they need to be pre-integrated and bundled through a more established vendor, perhaps one who already has that existing commercial relationship with a telco? Um, yeah, actually, it's true that Open Run comes with this promise of mix and match uh, between different vendors, uh, increasing, uh, let's say, uh, vendor diversity, increasing flexibility of deployment, including with smaller vendors. But uh, we should not forget that it's a new model, particularly for brownfield operators who are used to uh, single RAN deployments. Um, so uh, we need to consider again uh, this introduction uh, step by step. Um, I would say that uh, in, in the initial phase, um, pre-integrated solutions bundled with well-established vendors could actually uh, speed up uh, the readiness of deployable solutions. But in the longer run, um, we can actually uh, work and we are actually working actively uh, in order to have a kind of a coordinated testing and a global certification framework to manage in a more efficient way uh, this interoperability testing between different vendors uh, and reduce this um, is a test burden on operators and avoid um, uh, all of these redundant type of testing. And this should at the end help uh, the smaller vendors uh, to, and, and this should give them a wider access actually to um, for, for integration and for interoperability type of testing. Yeah, we'll be certainly welcomed. Um, there's growing interest in incorporating AI within the RAN, including its ability to optimize operations. There's growing interest to incorporate AI everywhere. What is the likelihood of an AI native open RAN? Is this something Orange would be keen to develop or, or keen to see being developed? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, actually, AI is, uh, um, is taking a growing role in the RAN at different levels. We have AI for operations, which uh, started to become actually available in commercial networks uh, for multiple use cases, such as predictive maintenance, uh, such as anomaly detection or root cause analysis and so on. Uh, we have also AI for network optimization. So here, initially, we're considering uh, AI for radio high layers, uh, for example, to optimize mobility, uh, to optimize load balancing, energy efficiency. Uh, but then, uh, potentially later, we can also consider AI for lower radio layers, including um, radio physical layer. Uh, but of course, it will depend on the gain versus pain. Um, so I would say that as such, um, Open RAN is indeed aimed to be AI native uh, and um, we need to consider several, let's say, um, architecture principles to introduce it. Um, as I said before, uh, a multi-domain and multi-vendor SMO is key with open interfaces such as O1, O2, A1 uh, that could bring intelligence uh, to our network and to the whole um, automation processes. And then uh, we also need to consider support of uh, RIC applications, particularly through non real time RIC, uh, again, with support of open interfaces and, uh, and in a multi vendor environment. And, um, and this also needs to be able to work with our traditional RAM. Now, you mentioned RIC there. How closely are you following developments with the RIC? What role do you see for X apps and R apps in your radio network? Um, actually, we are actively um, following the development of RIC and we have several initiatives, uh, test initiatives in-house. Um, I would say for us, uh, this uh, RIC framework comes with several uh, benefits. Um, it brings a kind of standardized framework for, um, for multi-vendor operation and interworking, uh, which um, actually uh, help us to have a better, uh, let's say, interworking compared to what we have today with CISOM. 
it also brings more, um, let's say, differentiation for uh, for operator uh, with customized apps, and uh, it brings also kind of more homogeneous um, experience across different RAM vendors uh, with third-party applications. So these are the main benefits that we see with uh, with standardized rig framework. And in that sense, our main uh, objective, our first main objective is to uh, actually ensure uh, the migration of our CSUN uh, towards uh, the non-real time rig, uh, as I said, not only for open RAN, cloud RAN, but also with, um, with traditional RAN. Uh, the role of um, XAP and near real time rig is not that clear today for us compared to the non real time rig, which is more mature today. Uh, we still need to evaluate, and we are evaluating actually uh, the real gains and, and use cases uh, with near real time rig and XCAP that could really bring value for, for us. That's great. Thank you very much, Atusa. And a final question for you. We've been discovering during this summit that good progress has been made but there are still challenges ahead. So what do you see as the challenges that OpenRAN still needs to overcome in order to fulfill its potential? Uh, so indeed, there are a few challenges that needs to uh, to be overcome uh, to allow wide-scale deployment of OpenRAN. Um, but uh, we don't see any showstopper, actually, uh, that, that prevent OpenRAN um, to be widely adopted in the, in the near future. So among the challenges that I would like to mention, uh, so I would say first uh, software parity, feature parity compared to traditional RAN, uh, but we see that today it's improving very well in the ecosystem, depending on the vendor, of course. Uh, we have already solutions uh, that are available in the market with, um, I would say, uh, near feature parity compared to, to the traditional RAN. Then we have um, energy efficiency to be improved, particularly for high uh, capacity radio configuration. Um, and this is more related to the energy efficiency of the cloud infrastructure, as I said before. Um, uh, so some improvements in terms of, uh, let's say, dimensioning uh, and, um, and energy efficiency uh, still to be done. But we're confident that this will happen with the next generation of chipset and also with the target of one server per site uh, that, uh, that is now considered in the near future. Um, then another aspect that I would like to mention is interoperability that still needs to be improved both on the open frontal and also on, um, on the portability of the VRAN software uh, over different uh, say, uh, type of cloud infrastructure. Uh, we have the SMO maturity that needs to be improved uh, in order to truly allow uh, multi-vendor and multi-domain management uh, uh, of both cloud RAN, open RAN and, and traditional RAN with a real open RIC uh, marketplace. Um, then uh, there is this, uh, let's say, challenge related to integration, which is which is still remains, actually. Uh, we think that the global integration framework in the industry could help to reduce the, the test burden, the interoperability test burden. Um, so on our side, in the short term, we are relying on, on vendors to take the lead for this integration part. However, in the long run, we don't close the door for us to take an, a more active role, actually, uh, in the whole process, which would also bring us, uh, actually, more autonomy uh, in the choice of our partners. Um, another point that I would like to actually add is related to, uh, actually, to operators' uh, side and, and the fact that we need also to, uh, to have a change of mindset uh, with uh, with introduction of open RAN and to adapt our processes and um, particularly, for example, related to vendor management and also all of the reskilling and upskilling that would be required for um, automation and softwareization. This is also um, an important point to keep in mind. And um, to finish, uh, I would also like to highlight a more, uh, let's say, generic question for the whole ecosystem longer term. And this is uh, related actually to the question uh, whether um, two lines of products will be maintained over time or uh, if eventually uh, it will converge to a single line of product which will be based on uh, open RAN cloud track. Oh, very interesting and a great question there at the end. We'll put that to um, our panels uh, later in the summit and, and see what, what they think as well. We must leave it there, Atusa. Thank you so much for taking part in our show today. Great insights. 
Now, don't forget, the full schedule of programmes and speakers can be found on the Telecom TV website. And please do take part in our poll. Goodbye for now.